Okay, so welcome to another video. Uh, just going to be a rough exploration of where I'm at with the Spin FV1 development board. Still figuring it out, but I have definitely made some progress. Although it's it's been a bit of a slog, to be honest. The main problem I had was that I recently bought a new Apple computer, a MacBook running the, you know, the Apple Silicon M1 processor. And um, as luck would have it, it turns out that although you can, in, you can use Windows on it, uh, which is, you know, the native operating system for all of the spin software, or you can try and run those programs using crossover and similar applications, uh, also parallels running it as a virtual machine. Um, no matter what I tried, I couldn't get the this program, uh, Spin ASM, to show that the dev board was connected properly over USB. I wasn't sure if it was because of the... I tried different ways um, using Parallels and running Windows as a virtual machine, although that means that you can only run Windows 11 on ARM because it's an ARM processor, so it's not Intel. I wasn't sure if that was the problem. I wasn't sure if it was because I was using Thunderbolt ports and not a traditional USB ports. Couldn't figure it out. I did try it everything uh i mean really everything to get it to work on the mac so now i'm running windows on a you know a standard windows 10 computer which i went out and bought um for other reasons as well but it's nice to have a native windows computer for this sort of thing so that's my first thing i you know want to stress is that you don't have to have a windows computer but if you've got an intel mac that's running boot camp that will work fine because i've done this on that in the past but then you know it's not so much fun having to boot to go between the two operating systems i still don't really know what i'm going to do because i do i do use final cut to edit videos on the mac but i'm trying to learn davinci resolve on here anyway that's beside the point so here we're running spin asm this is one of the two main programs that you use with the fv1 this is essentially where you can write programs or load programs and then load them or assemble them to the board itself via the usb port it's actually very simple to use um, the coding side of it is, is obviously going to be difficult um, that's the part that i'm learning haven't made much progress on the other one of the two programs is this one here which is really cool uh, it's called spin cad designer and but you can get these both for free online this is essentially a you know gui based version of spin asm and what you can do here is you can essentially make a patch just with the gui so i've you know i've got a rom reverb i've added an input i've connected the input and output and pot zero pot one and pot two they're the standard uh, pots you can use to control parameters so it will come up uh, down the bottom here if I put my mouse over that one there that's telling me reverb time if down the bottom here second one low frequency third one high frequency I can then save that patch or save patch as ASM so we'll just call it reverb one I save that then I can open that in spin ASM and pass it straight to the FV1 uh, that's the one I've already got there. I haven't changed it. And then we just simply click the assemble button. And that's literally put that straight on there. So a pretty cool little thing once you get set up. Uh, I, I haven't spent too much time exploring this, but I'm definitely going to. It will tell you... So if you try to stack two reverbs, for example, it will tell you that you've used up all the delay RAM. Uh, if I put this in... Yeah, see, there we go. So I think that means that... You probably just won't get an audio output if I do that, um, if I do it that way. But, you know, I'll see what, what else we can do with this uh, because there's a lot of options. So you've got, obviously, you've got your inputs and outputs and standard sort of mixers and stuff like that. Wave Shaper, Dynamics, Filters, Delay, Reverb, Modulation, Pitch, your Control Parameters, 
I don't know too much about the rest, but we're definitely going to delve deeper into this and see what sort of cool sounds we can make. Because at the moment, I'm just sort of over the hump of getting everything actually set up and working, which is a nice hump to be over because now, you know, it should be the fun part. If you want to go into the weeds and learn all the code parameters, um, it is really well laid out on the spin website here. So it's got, you know, all of the, um, all of the code functions, it's all in here. It's very detailed, but you know, it's well laid out. So I do intend to go through all this and get a better handle on it all, as well as this PDF manual with all the instructions set. One thing I will say, um, with spin CAD designer. So it's a Java program. It, so obviously install Java. And then I did install an application called Jarfix, which just allows you to run SpinCAD, SpinCAD Designer with a double click rather than, I think, sort of loading it into Java and assembling it and stuff. It gets kind of complicated. I don't really know the corporate reasoning for why you can't just double click it without that Jarfix thing, but it is what it is. So anyway, I've got a guitar here and this is all connected up. So that's that reverb program that we loaded. So we max all the parameters. That's the shortest reverb time and the longest. It's not too bad. I don't. I'm gonna. I think it is the maximum time for any FV1 reverb. But I'm gonna see what we can do with that because. It's not too bad, but it could be better. Um, I do remember owning a pedal, the Spring Theory, I believe it was called. It might have been by Mr. Black or one of those Portland companies. I can't remember which, but I remember that pedal had some insane one minute reverb time or something like that. So, and it would have been FV1 to the best of my knowledge. So I'm pretty sure we can do more as well as get more than three parameters, apparently. The other thing I'm going to try and do is a vibrato, a digital vibrato, because I've currently been working on a Boss VB2 vibrato clone. Um, that was difficult enough in its own right. So I'll show you. I just used a um, amalgamation of schematics from the BYOC clone as well as um, some of the older Boss schematics. So this is the basically the VB2 schematic. Um, and then if we open up the layout, the layout was a nightmare. I used a lot of surface mount components to get it into a reasonable size enclosure. I still really don't expect it to work, but we're going to just see what happens. I've already ordered this online from JLC PCB. So as you can see, it's pretty high parts count. This is way over my head. I really had no idea what I was doing with this, to be honest. Um, and I'm sure, you know, people can critique the sloppiness of the layout. I'm not an electronics engineer by any stretch. So I kind of just did my best on this. I left um, any of the polarized caps and obviously all the transistors and pots, trim pots and ICs weren't surface mount pretty much all of the caps and resistors are surface mount um, diodes weren't so that does once you um, get it all going that you know that can help um, basically the parts ordering so JLC is a really good site um, you can see there's my schematic and then this is you have to input all the parts you want them to use so that is a long process. Basically, you you can spit out a file of your uh, like your pick and place. So if we open up my one, it is I believe it's this one. So this shows you all of the parts and. Okay, so this is the bill of materials. So it's got a value, 
It's got a, you know, which part that is in the circuit and then what type of part to use. And this just helps speed up the process of specifying all the parts, but it still was pretty long and extremely boring. Um, and then if we open up this one, this is the pick and place instructions. So you, you have the part, it tells the machine where the center points are on an XY plane and they're all on the top side it's only single-sided assembly and then whether or not to rotate the parts and i will say the jlc site is really good for at least verifying if it's going to work or not they have these sample build materials and uh it's called a cpl is sort of the pick and place section and then you basically go through the website and specify each part one by one um which you know that, that's all done so we're going to see how that vb2 pans out and then hopefully compare it to the, the digital equivalent w with the FV1 chip. So yeah, that's where we're at. Um, let's just have a listen to a few more of the sample programs. The other thing I will say is that, you know, the spin, spin ASM program is really good. It has some sample programs as well. So you can go open project. These just come with it. So ROM, pitch, whatever that is. It's got explanations for each line of code so it's a really handy learning tool in my opinion so let's just assemble this and see how it sounds Let's just open another one because that is not spectacular. So some sort of reverb and trim. <laughs> Yeah, that's basically all I've got for today. We're definitely going to keep experimenting with how far we can take the FV1. And then, you know, if I'm happy with the results, then I will consider building some digital pedals. I mean, I think I'm currently more in the camp of I would rather learn to code for plugins and stuff like that just because the power of computers themselves and smartphones and stuff like that. There's it seems to be a, a more you can do in terms of digital effects that way compared to being limited by the fv1 in a, a guitar pedal enclosure everyone seems to have a computer somewhere near their guitar rig these days anyway and an interface for the most part so i'm torn on where to spend my time with that but yeah we'll see what happens with this it's nice that you know i am not I don't have a computer science degree or an ele um, electronics engineering degree and uh, you know this the FV1 is made for the sort of the DIY layman at least so people like us can kind of learn to make you know digital effects or you know at least for ourselves at least for DIY use so we'll see how far we can take it and if you have any questions definitely just leave them down below once i have a bit more knowledge i'll do a more in-depth video on all of this i think um, but let me know if you have any questions or if anything isn't quite clear from this video we can definitely explain that in more detail